All right, we're going to be looking at the 2010 release test of the grade 8 mathematics. Uh, so this is 8th grade uh, 2010 SOL math test. If you want to check out the website, uh, you just go right down there. All right, so let's take a look at this first one. Uh, we got which is equivalent to the expression shown. So remember, equivalent just means equals. Uh, so we're going to do everything for order of operations in this. So parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. So we look inside our parentheses first. We got multiply and subtract. So we're going to do that multiplication first. So 3 times 2 is 6. So we got 6 minus 4. Still got parentheses, got to, so we've got to finish that out. So we got negative 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. So negative 5 times 2. Negative 10. Okay. Which number is less than 22,874? So we're just going to convert these to what they need to be. Uh, so if we move this one, remember, uh, scientific notation, uh, you just move the decimal uh, however many times it says in the exponent. So if it's positive, you're going right. If it's negative, you're going left. So this is a 4, so we're going 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. So since there's two nothings there, we have 21800. Okay, this one's going to end up giving us a 25500, and then a 24. Uh, there's going to be a 3, and then three zeros. And this one's going to give us 1, 7, 8, and then 4 zeros. So the question asks which one was smaller than 22,874? That would have been F. All right, which, uh, what is the value of 4 minus 3 to the third power? Uh, so that's just 4 minus 3 to the third power is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 4 minus 27 is a negative 23. Which of the following does not represent a rational number? Um, so remember... Our number system, we have natural numbers which are uh, like our counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. Uh, then we have wholes, which include 0. Then we have integers, which have negatives but still no fractions. And then we have our rationals, which can go on forever as long as they repeat or have a terminating decimal. And you have irrationals, and then everything is a real number. So basically all we're looking for is uh, something that's an irrational number uh, in this. So f is, says 0, and that's a whole number, so that's irrational. 2 and a half, uh, those are rationals because it has a terminating decimal. Negative 1 tenth is a terminating decimal. And if you were to do the square root of 3, uh, that goes on forever and does not repeat. So that is our... Uh, that is an irrational number, which is not irrational. This is which of the which of these statements is a true statement? So we should write these down. So this is saying uh, point zero two is greater than two hundred. So that's not true. Uh, this is saying three thousand one hundred is equal to three thousand one hundred. That is true. So that's probably our answer. This one's 0 0.025 equals 250. That's not true. And this one says 0 0.235 is smaller than uh, 0 0.0235. So we were good. B is our answer on that one. All right, the set of whole numbers is not a subset. So we just talked about that um, in our thing. So we got whole, natural, integer, uh, rational, irrational, and real. So remember, a subset just means that it's uh, contained in. Um, so a whole number is inside an integer, it's inside a rational, it's inside a real, not inside an irrational number. In uh, other words, it just says, um, when it says a subset, that means um, a whole number. So like the only whole no like whole numbers are countings. So like let's say a whole number we have is 5. A 5 is also a natural. Oops, I had these backwards. This is a natural number. 
these are your whole numbers. So again, let's say with 5. Uh, 5 is a natural, 5 is a whole, 5 is an integer, 5 is a real. Alright, which is ordered from greatest to least? So these all have your same thing, uh, but the easiest way to uh, compare scientific notations is just look at the exponents. So if we want greatest to least, you just need the one with the biggest. So we got 9, 6, 4, 2, 9, 4, 6, 2. So that's not right because uh, 4 is smaller than 6. 2, 6, 4, 9. Nope. And 2, 4, 6, 9. So the only one because 9, 6, 4, 2. So if you just look at your exponents for the scientific notation, uh, those will tell you um, how to do greatest to least. Which of the following describes the square root of 41? Uh, now we can do this without a calculator because we just know our perfect squares. Uh, so for we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49. Uh, so this is just 1 squared. This is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared and 7 squared. So uh, we can know that the square root of 41 uh, is going to be between 6 and 7 because 41 is between 36 and 49. And then if you were allowed to use a calculator, you could check that. And 6.4. So between 6 and 7. All right, which of the following, or which of the value of 2 times the quantity of 5 minus a uh, and all that squared plus 7a when a equals 2. So you're just going to substitute in. Alright, do your parentheses first. So this is going to be 2 minus 3 squared plus 7 times 2. Let's do our exponent. Do my multiplication. Do my other multiplication. And finally, we're going to add it together. All right, so there you go, 32. All right, <clears throat> Rod, Rob had $363.75 in his bank account on June 12th. He made one deposit and two withdrawals as shown. Uh, what was the balance of Rob's bank account after the withdrawal on June 15th? All right, so remember, withdrawal makes you go down. Uh, deposit makes you go up. So for this one, I'm going to subtract. Uh, the 363.75 minus 47.5. So let's go ahead and do that. 363.75 minus 47.5. So it gives me 316.25. So right now he's got 316.25. Uh, since I made a deposit now, I'm going to add that. So this is going to be 50 cents. Uh, 1 plus 6 is 7. That's going to be a zero. So now I got $407.50. And, and then I'm going to take away the $54.75. And so he's got $352.75. So $352.75. It's right there. <coughs> All right, what is the value of x cubed plus x squared plus x when x equals 3? So I want 3 cubed plus 3 squared plus 3. So this is 27 plus 9 plus 3, uh, which is going to give you a whoops, 39. Uh, which number is a perfect square? Uh, that is going to be 9. Okay, nothing times itself is 6. Nothing times itself is 12. Nothing times itself is 15. And 3 times 3 is 9. Albert had a goal of saving $80. He saved 150% of his goal. How much money did Albert save? Um, so all we're going to do with this is we're going to go, which we're doing part over a whole equals percent over 100. So my part is what I don't know because uh, my goal was 80. So that was my whole. 115 is my percent. So we're going to make this an x. So I'm going to 100x equals, uh, we can do 115 times 80 equals 9,200. 
divide by 100. So x equals 92. So he actually saved $92. All right, the square root of which of the following integers is between 7 and 8? So we should know that 7 squared is 49 and 8 squared is 64. So all you got to do is pick the number that's between both of those. So it's not that one. Uh, 64 is too much. 65 is too much. So it's got to be G. All right, what is the surface area of a rectangular prism uh, with the dimension shown? So remember, this is just 2 length times width plus 2 length times height plus 2 height times width. So I'm going to choose 3.5 as my length. I'm going to choose 1 as my width. Um, so that means I'm going 3.5 as my length again. So my height, I'm going with 2. And then I said height was 2, width was 1. So go ahead and multiply this all out. Uh, 2 times 3.5 times 1 is 7. Uh, 2 times 3.5 times 2 is 14. And then 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. Uh, so go ahead and add these all up. So that's going to be 7 plus 14 is 21. 21 plus 4 is 25 inches squared. Or square inches.